I will make a <laughs> short introduction. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on your time zone. Uh, today we are together with Steve Campbell uh, and we are going to talk about best practice for Power BI bookmarks. He will walk us through the fine details of Power BI bookmarks. Thanks a lot, Steve, for joining us. It's it's very valuable for us. It's and, and it's my pleasure to have you with us today. Okay, Excited uh, to be here. Exactly. Uh, before we get started, a little bit housekeeping for the audience. Chat window is open and during the meetup, you can uh, ask your questions either by writing into chat window or raising your hand and then unmute by unmuting yourself. Please feel free to ask any type of question regarding the subject and uh, bookmarks. Without further ado, I'm handing over to you, Steve. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. So let me just share my screen. Now, uh, there's a couple of, of, of quick slides here just to, to guide me through, but this is going to be a lot of, of demos and a lot of just some tips and tricks. It's, it's going to be focused mainly on bookmarks, but we'll also look at that PBIX file. So we do a lot of best practices in things like modeling and DAX, but actually having a, a maintainable PBIX file is really, really important, especially if you work with other developers or if you want to come back to a file later, is ways to clean it up and make sure that editing things in that PBIX files, editing different um, visuals and the focus of today, editing bookmarks are going to be a lot easier. So quickly, just about me. Um, my name's Steve Campbell. So I'm the uh, data visualization lead. So I run the Cap Power BI capability at Cognizant um, Microsoft Business Group in the UK. Um, I'm a MVP in Power BI. <coughs> I've lived in UK, Australia, and the USA. I was recently in the USA for almost a decade, but I'm back here in Europe, back in the UK now. Um, and I also co-run the Milwaukee Power Platform User Group. And we focus on power apps and power um, BI as well. And Milwaukee is over in the States. It's close to Chicago, if anyone's unfamiliar, which I'm sure probably a lot are. So um, we'll go from a couple of tips. Uh, the first one, and this isn't really too much to do about <laughs> bookmarks, but I, I like to throw this in here. A good way is always to split your model and report. Um, meaning that you have a model file. If you're using Power BI, this could be an analysis services model or a single model. And then you have a report file with the PBIX. Now, the reason I mention this is we're going to be focusing on that report file. So when I say the PBIX, you know, the, the file, I'm really talking about that file with the visuals and the bookmarks in. We're not really going to be looking at the model or, or the data side, um, but we're looking at that, that report with the bookmarks and all the visuals, which is very important. And it's, it's often quite overlooked and not given the, um, the amount of care and need it's done. And what happens is you try and go back and change something, you know, four months, eight months down the line. And it's going to take you a long time to try and figure out what your bookmarks do. It's going to fit, take a long time to, to realize which tables and, and graphs are where. So this is getting everything really neat. And then obviously going to focus on bookmarks and, and say some cool tips and tricks on those. So now the rest of the slides are just going to be um, single, single tips. And these are some best practices. They're, uh, you know, um, no real structure, they're just a kind of a handful of, of tips and best practices that we'll go through. So the first one, this comes in really handy when you're doing bookmarks and when you're creating um, your visuals and, and creating the bookmarks, is rename your visuals. So going through, I'm going to be going through 
this Power BI report. Um, I, it's got a very simple model in it, and it just has some uh, information about some countries, and then their GDP, their population, and their crime um, over years. It's really, really simple. Again, focusing on the visuals and the Power BI side of stuff. So when I say rename your visuals, what do I mean? Now, the most important thing, obviously, when we're looking at bookmarks is if you come to this view tab right here, which is the view tab, you want to turn on, obviously, the bookmark pane, which is here. Um, without it, it will be difficult to record bookmarks. The other vital one you want to turn on is this selection pane. Now, hopefully you've you've seen the selection pane before you've used it. It is going to be your best friend when you make visuals. Really, really important, really useful to, to use. And we'll go through and see why. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a couple of, of quick visuals in here. So let me add a, um, we can just look at, uh, let's look at population. Yeah, by country. And we'll add another graph here. And this can be, we'll add the year to the axis. We'll look at the population over the year. Then what we can do is I'm going to add a, a slicer. Um, again, you know, this, this might not be the most useful and, and helpful slicers, but the idea here is we're not building a, a useful report, we're building one to, to demonstrate the capabilities and what we should do. So you will notice here that in the selection pane, it's added each visual we have. Now, it's automatically given a name to our graphs, population by country, population by year, and then just the word slicer. If I was to add another slicer here and add this one to country, you'll notice that this too is also called slicer. Most people leave this, just kind of have them all, don't worry about it. My tip and what I would say is a best practice is always rename your visuals when you add them. You will notice that the visuals by default go by the title. So if you have a title, we could call this line graph. This is then going to change the title here. Excuse me. And then the title in the selection pane. This is good, but sometimes I, I want to leave the the title as default, and I might want to give the name a bit more use for me. Now, the, the reason we're going to be renaming this, the reason we want to rename everything is when we record bookmarks and when we start grouping visuals, we want to look at this slicer pane, uh, the selection pane, and understand what we're actually selecting and what visual it is. Otherwise, it's going to become very confusing, especially if you have a lot of elements. So you can simply double click on the selected visual and you can see when I select them, it's it's selecting the, the appropriate visual in the in the report. So this could be country slicer. And I can just rename it directly in the selection pane. This is my preferred way um, because this way I don't have to rename it, don't have to give it a different title especially if you're using some conditional formatting for titles. This could be year slicer. And I might call this country bar graph. And this could be year line graph. Now I'm naming these here so that I really understand. Um, and you know, you can turn the, the titles off here. So that I really understand what um, what these refer to, because when I'm looking at them, if they're not correctly correctly named, again, if they're all slicer, it's going to be very very confusing for me. 
to kind of see what they are going forward with recording bookmarks. It's going to be very, very confusing. So that's tip number one. And again, some of these tips are just kind of building up some best practices in the beginning. The second uh, tip I have is to, to group visuals. Now, grouping visuals is going to be kind of. Uh, sorry, kind of um, related to when we record bookmarks and it goes in to. Um, recording bookmarks on your groups. So let me go into this and let me show what I mean. Throughout this, we're going to go for an example where we do a nice little switch bookmark. If you're familiar with this, you've probably seen these on reports where you have a, a graph with a button and then you can set graph like this. Maybe I have a button here which will change it to a map. Now, the easiest thing to do is always group things together that are similar. One thing I often do is group my slices together. So you can either kind of select them by dragging or my personal favorite way to select things is in the selection pane. I will hold control and click all the elements I want. And then I can right click and click group. Now you'll see this has now grouped these two items together. And this is called group one. Again, these are my slices. As well as renaming the visuals, I also want to rename the groups. Same way, I can double click on group one and I'll call this slices. <laughs> now, I'm not going to group my two graphs together right now. We'll see why, because I'm going to group these together in a different way. And the reason I'm going to do this is that I'm going to have, as I said, a button which changes this from a bar graph into a map. So now we're going to go through uh, a technique to kind of do this using buttons. Then I'm going to show you why this technique I'm going to show you probably isn't actually going to be that relevant for too long because of an upcoming change that they're making to bookmarks um, that was announced at MBAS in the summer. But it's a it's a good um, exercise to go through to understand why to do this and, and different kind of features of the bookmarks. So if you're familiar with the selection pane, one thing you can do is by clicking on the eye, you can hide visuals. So if I click on my bar graph, I've hidden this visual. Now it's not gone anywhere, it's just hidden, so I can always get it back. If you do hide a visual, it won't render in your report on your report um, when you load your report page. So if you have loads of visuals and loads of switching around, only the visible visuals will load or will render kind of when you open that page. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to hide this year line graph just so I can get it out the way and I have some real estate whilst I create my, my switch visual. So my switch visual is going to switch this bar graph from a bar graph to a map. I'm going to have two buttons at the bottom which says um, bar graph and map. And we're looking at a nice easy way to do this through buttons. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in my map. And I'm going to add my country to the location. And my uh, population to the color. Now I'm not too worried about formatting or how it looks at this point. Now the second tip is I'm going to um, say here when we say about the grouping of visuals is that I would always recommend recording your bookmarks on groups. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean, but I would say I would never record or try to avoid, and in most cases, recording a bookmark directly on a visual. And I will show you why um, in the in the uh, as as we go through. So 
basically what my my bookmark's going to do is it's going to switch between these. So I'm going to rename this visual to map of population. So now I know, you know, this is the map um, or population map to keep it consistent <laughs> with the others. The population map, year line graph, country bar graph. Um, what let's just say population population bar graph would make more sense. Keep it consistent. You know, there's there's no real naming um, best practices. Obviously, just my recommendation: keep everything consistent. Also, name for other people is one big thing. Exactly. Think of this. So, so, sorry about interrupting. Yeah. Name, naming convention yeah. is one of the most important thing in in coding generally, but it's especially important in Power, Power BI, especially for uh, finding the right scheme to re rename your measures. Everything. Yeah, and to that point, always assume that somebody else is going to be looking at this report, even if it's your report and you're the only one working on it now. Who knows what's happening in the future? You might leave, you might get promoted, somebody else might take this report. I'm sure several people on this call, I know I have I've been handed a Power BI report. You've opened it up and you've just thought, what on earth is going on here? It's just a nightmare because people haven't spent time to name and, and to, to do this type of stuff correctly. So, uh, as as her agrees here, naming conventions very important. So my um, now I've named them and I've got my two um, visuals here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have a button and it's going to make one visual appear, and then the other button will make the second visual appear. So we can switch which visual we want to see because maybe some people like a map maybe some like a bar graph. So I said always record um, bookmarks on groups. Now, that's going to be difficult because we don't have any groups and we don't want to record this on single um, single visuals. So one tip and one trick what I do is I can insert just a, a blank shape. It can be anything, it'd be a text box or a shape. Now I'm going to make two of these, one for each visual. So now I have two, two elements and you need two elements to group. So I can select these two elements. And I can right click and I can group. So now I have my group. Immediately I'm going to rename my group. Do it immediately and it becomes a habit and it takes seconds. This is my map visual. I'm going to do the same for the graph and the, the other shape. I'm going to group this. And this is my bar graph. Now, this is great. Obviously, these um, blue squares aren't meaningful. They were just here. I can now go and I can click on the shape and I can just um, to click, there, click there. I can just press delete and I'm deleting it out. So now I have a group with just one element in. Um, you can't group anything on its own, obviously, but this is a little <laughs> trick and work around just to get items into a group by themselves. Um, here we have here we have these two these two groups. Now you can see they're a group because they've got a drop drop down. You know this this means they're a group here. Uh, it's going to let me open. So now we have our groups. I can record my bookmarks. Now there's a few different um, settings on bookmarks, and my next big piece of advice is always change the settings on your bookmarks and I'll go through what to change them to and what to not do. My first bookmark is I want to record the bar graph visible and the map invisible. I'm going to hide the map by clicking on the eye. So now I just have my bar graph visible. 
and I'm, I'm actually hiding this group, right? So I'm, I'm hiding the group, not the visual inside, because I can do either. I can hide the whole group, or I can hide the individual visual inside that group. I'm going to hide the whole group. So I always keep my, my groups closed. You can see this, you know, they're pointing out to, to stop some confusion. So let's record the group. This button is only going to affect these two visuals and groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the two groups by holding control and clicking both in the selection pane. Obviously, I can only do this in the selection pane because that a map visual isn't there. It's, it's invisible. So now I'm going to add a bookmark by just selecting add. Yeah. Now this is recorded currently the state of everything on my page. And it really has recorded everything, and that's not what we want. So by clicking the ellipsis. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. There's several settings that I want to go through. You may be familiar with these, but you may not understand as well quite exactly um, what they mean and, and how they update uh, certain stuff. This top half update, rename, delete group. Same as, as, as the visuals, right? You can update, you can rename, you can delete it, and you can group bookmarks just like you do selections, which we're going to do and we're going to recommend, but we'll get to that later. Next in the second uh, pane, this is what that bookmark is affecting. Data display current page. Data just means um, actual the 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 model, basically anything that comes from the fields. So filters and, and sort orders, stuff like that, that relies on the, the data and the numbers itself. Display is um, pretty much, you know, whether it's hidden or unhidden, it's going to be, can you see it? And can you not see it? Current page, just means that the, the tab of the Power BI, the page on the Power BI, if you press this button, will it come to that page? Then we have two on the bottom. And you can see by default, all visuals is selected, or we can have selected visuals. When you have all visuals selected, which is unfortunately the default, it affects everything on your page. Again, I selected these two visuals because I just want to affect those two visuals. So for me, I'm going to select selected visuals. One big bit of advice I would give you. There is almost no reason to ever use all visuals. Very, very few times do you need to do that. Um, it will change things dramatically that you don't want to do. I will show you some examples here. I can maybe be looking at kind of a let me say I'm recording a filter here. I'm putting a filter 2014 and, and I've got a country name. A countries selected. I can add a bookmark. And I'll leave it at, at all field. Uh, all visuals. Now let me kind of close this, reset everything. I've reset everything. Look what happens when I press this bookmark, and these are things that you often overlook. And just an example. Notice I've closed the filter pane here. But with that all visuals, it's going to record the state of the filter pane, whether that's open. It really records everything and very rarely do you want the bookmark that's going to record the state of the filter pane. It records things like sort orders and, and drill downs. It's also a nightmare when you start adding new visuals to the page with a with a bookmark already in. Really, really, I would recommend very rarely do you want to do all visuals because almost always a bookmark is going to affect a certain visual or a certain view or even a certain slice or something like that. So I've selected selected visuals. Next, I typically um, turn off current page. It's going to be irrelevant because my bookmark is going to be on this page. But it just makes it easier to understand what your bookmarks doing if someone else is coming in and looking at it. Um, if you leave current page on and somebody else comes and looks at your report, they might think that's important. 
it's not, so I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm just going to reset, reset all my stuff here. Now the last thing is um, data and display. I don't want to change the data, so I'm not doing any filters on this. I just all I'm doing is switching visuals to see. In fact, I don't want to change the data because even have filters. I want that to to transfer, and I want those same filters to be applied. So let me take off data. So now you can see I have display and selected visuals. This is probably about 80% of the filters of the sorry of the bookmarks that I record have only these two. Generally, you only want selected visuals and usually only display or data. Very rarely, I found very few use cases where you need more than that. But selected visuals, I will say again, really, really useful. Um, if you forget or you leave that, it causes headaches and it really affects things like that filter pane, ways you weren't expecting. Now, just like the visuals, everything applies a lot. I want to rename this. I don't want this to be called bookmark one. I'm going to call this show bar graph. Cool. So now I have a bookmark. And if you want to play a bookmark, you can just select it. Um, it's this is the bookmark state. So now I want to do one for show map visual. So I'm going to hide the bar graph and unhide the map visual. And now I can put the map visual over there. Just a, uh, one word of advice. One downside about grouping elements and grouping visuals is that it kind of makes them hard to move about. And I'll show you some examples later when we have more in the group. But this is where selection pane is your friend. Select the visual in the selection pane. And that selects the visual. If you see here, if I click here, I'm actually selecting the group and it, it makes things and you can see my formatting panes gone. I really want the visual selected. So I select it in the selection pane. It's easier because I know what I'm, I'm clicking. I only have to click it once. When you want to move things as well, I find it easier to drag the ellipsis. Um, sometimes I think you'll, I'm sure you've had it where you try and move stuff and, and you end up selecting something and it can be difficult. The ellipsis will always help you move the item. I'm just going to resize it here. It's the right place. So now I've got my map showing and my bar graph. Again, I'm going to select the bar graph because I want this, the bar graph being invisible. That's an important part of the bookmark. And I want the map being visual and important part. I'm going to add my bookmark. Now I'm going to selected visuals. That's always my first step. Selected visuals, I can check these are the two visuals I've selected. So I control click them, I can see in the selection pane. And just to be aware, when you say selected visuals, it's the selected visuals when you hit that add button. So it's from when it was recorded, um, not you know from when you do any of this. Turn off current page, so I won't confuse anyone because it's not necessary. And turn off data. Of course, I'm gonna show map. Now, just like um, when we did in this selection pane, this is even more important, and this is one of the, the best things you can do with um, the bookmarks, is I'm going to select both of them by control clicking. And now I'm going to click the ellipsis or right click, and I can click group. This is going to be very important in the future, and I'll show you why um, towards the end. Again, of course, group one, that's no good. Anytime you have a generic name like text box, slicer, bookmark one, group one, change it, always change it. Um, I want this map bar. So here's a naming convention. I'm going to call this P1 because this is page one. Map bar switch. I like to include the page that it's on because as I make this report, you'll probably get lots. And if you just say this is a, you know, Bookmark seven, 
where does that where does that relate to? I know this is on page one and you know, pick a naming convention that makes sense to you, but pick one that people can understand. If I open my group and I can click on both of my bookmarks. And I have I've have messed this this one up. Um, not sure what I did, but let me show you how to update in case you messed up. Let's pretend I did that on purpose. For some reason, I think I have them both um, both invisible. So I'm just going to unhide this how it should be. I'm going to click both of the um, both the bookmarks. And now instead of re-recording it, I can simply click here and update. This essentially re-records it, but it keeps all the settings that was there. So I don't have to rename, I don't have to regroup it. So if I show map, here we go. The map's working correctly. The bar graph's invisible. The map's visible. Um, it's got every country, so it's a little slow. And now I'll show my bar graph. So this is great. This is um, gives users, you know, we don't take up real estate. We have extra, extra users to use this. One thing we want to say is now, why did I say always record on groups? A good thing with the group is that it, when you record a bookmark on the group, it no longer relies on the elements um, inside that group individually. It just does everything in that group. So let's just have a, an example, and we'll show a better example later. I'm going to have an octagon here. This octagon now is called shape. I'm going to call this octagon. I think I spelled that wrong. Doesn't matter. Um, this should be a C. But let's say um, I can add this to a group. So if I want to group this octagon, I can simply on the selection pane click and drag it into my bar graph visual group. So now my bar graph visual has this octagon and my bar graph. Now look what happens when I click my show map. That octagon now, that shape, is part of that group. The other thing I can do is if I didn't want a bar graph at all, I can completely add a different graph. I can have more graphs. I can add this to text. I can delete this, this graph. I can put more in. Those bookmarks are already set up. So it doesn't really rely on me having to re-record the bookmarks if I want to change something because the groups, they're done on the groups. The groups are like placeholders. So I can add things, I can remove things, I can do everything and put completely new stuff in. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to delete <laughs> this octagon. Now obviously these bookmarks aren't um, very useful unless we can, the user can select them. So the best way is by buttons. I'm going to add two buttons in. A button here. And then a button here. Now, my first button, I'm going to call this. Um, oops, I accidentally dropped that in the group somehow. So I have my two buttons. I'm seeing some strange behavior here. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Let me delete my buttons and start again. It's going to. Here you go. This looks, this looks better. Um, my first button is going to be um, for users who want to see the bar graph. So on the format button pane, so I've got this button selected. I'm going to put the text on. I'm going to call this bar. Now, golden rule of visuals. What should I do? Rename my visual. Here you go. Bar. Button. Again, you know, just bar or just button doesn't make a lot of sense. So this is I could, you know, bar switch button might be more. Um, today might be more useful again naming convention here once you start with one uh, one way follow it through this one again turn the text call it map um guess what we're going to name this app 
and you know keep it the same i'm going to have it exactly the same now for the buttons my map switch button i want that to show the map because i want people to click map and see a map so on the buttons uh, for map pane down here we have an action and i want the type of action to be a bookmark bookmark i want is to show map for the um, bar switch button so click that in the selection pane action i'm going to turn on i want it to be a bookmark and the type of bookmark is show bar graph now if you're unfamiliar on how to use buttons in a desktop um, when you publish this to the service users can just click but in the desktop you have to hold um, control so if i hold control see control here this is just in a desktop because otherwise if you clicked and the, and the action happened you'll never be able to move the button or, or interact with it um, in developer mode so i'm holding control on my computer and now i have a map and then now i have a bar so i can switch back and forth this is pretty pretty good um one thing i would quite like though is to to see if that button is selected or not because it's not obvious which one i'm on i mean i can see there's a bar graph and a bar but this might be confusing to me it's the ui is just not great so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to in insert a nice shape here a rectangle and i'm going to resize it so it's the same size as my my button here and i'm going to have the fill to be a light gray and i'm just going to turn the outline off now something you'll notice about this selection pane is that this is also the layer order so this shape and i'm going <laughs> to golden rule yeah i almost didn't follow it rename my visual i've just made it what is this so this is going to be my button bar background do you know what i'm going to call it my bar button background um kind of flow more with my naming convention this is on the top of my selection plane so when i move this you can see it's going to be on top of everything um, and it's gonna gonna be hard to see through it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this over here and i'm just going to click and drag it down um underneath underneath the visuals and the buttons so now you can see this looks like you know this bar is selected i've, I've got a selection it gives the impression that that um, button is is pressed so i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to copy and paste this one to save time i'm going to rename it to bar app background and then i'm going to place it here um if i ever go here so you get the the idea you can see now it looks like they're both selected so how do i make one of these disappear without re-recording my um bookmarks this is the beauty of the groups because now I've added this, this extra feature. I don't have to re-record anything. I can simply click the background into the correct group. So when I put my bar map background to the bar graph visual group, and I put my bar button background into the map. Oh, sorry, this should be map. <laughs> Didn't rename it. Map button background into my, and I've, oh, I've named these the wrong, Wrong way around. So this is the, oh, I see what I've done here. <laughs> Map, button, background. And this is the bar, button, background. Um, so now I've put them in the group. My map, button, background, if you if you followed along my, my um, troubles with my naming there, has now disappeared. So it's, it's gone invisible because it's part of the group, my map visual group, and that's invisible. So now when I click map, that's also going to activate that background. And that's going to show that button um, look like it's highlighted as well. 
So finally, what did I say? Let's let's group these up, right? These two buttons, we can right click and group. All these um, buttons. So very cool. Um, that is kind of a, a, one of my favorite tips and tricks. I will show you a very short video at the end why you won't actually have to do this for buttons anymore. And they're going to change it and it's going to basically do it for you. However, the techniques and the reason of grouping and renaming remain the same. Recording things on bookmarks are still, the advice still, still holds, even if this specific use case might go away in the future. And I don't know when, um, soon, hopefully. The, the second one I want to show, and I'm actually uh, going to show you a nice, um, a really nice report. I'm not sure if you, anyone's seen this. This is the Washington, it's the Washington state in the US, um, their COVID one. Now, something I really like is, that, you know, they've got their kind of bookmarks at the top, which just go to different pages. But this is the one that, that I think is really cool. And I can see how they've done it. I'm going to show you a different way on how to do it. Hospitalizations. This is orange, right? Hospitalizations is orange. Cases is blue. And, you know, vaccinations is, is purple. Really quick, and it changes everything here. So one cool way, they've, they've just used bookmarks and a lot of pages and, and different um, views. Now, one way you can see I've kind of modeled this off them, not not, not saying to, to copy anyone and to go and steal their work, but it's just such a great report, I think. Um, I want to show a really cool way of doing that. And we will see um, in my data, I have a, a, a selection table. And if you're familiar kind of what this is, it's just for me, it's got the population, crime and GDP. These are my three main metrics like in that it was the um, cases and the vaccinations. I'm looking at the population, the crime GDP. And this is just a hard coded table. I've given each one a number. I've given each one a color. And this is just a hex value. Um, you can easily find a hex value anywhere on any color picker. So I've just hard coded this in. Now my measure is just gonna say whatever I select in that table, and it's looking at the number. So if it's number one, show the population measure. Number two, show the crime measure. Number three, show the GDP measure. Um, quite simple. So if I add a bar graph, add my switch value, and let's put it against country. Um, right now, I haven't got a default in the selected value, so nothing shows. But what I can do is I can add my selection here as a, and I'm just going to run through this because it's not really the main point. But here's here's my um turn that, turn that. So here's my selection and I'm gonna force force a selection here by telling single select. So let me put this against country so it looks so when I have crime it shows the crime values, GDP it shows GDP and population it shows G, uh, population. Again, not not uh, relevant to this. But what's really cool, I think, is now with my filter, I can actually um, use this color value to do so much. So my other um, other measure I've got here is just called selected, and this just show, tell, shows me which value is selected, which will come in useful later. Not quite showing that. Um, not too important. Oops. Right now. But what I'm going to do is I want to look at um, my data colors. And you can see here, I've got the default color, or I can use this FX, which allows me to do conditional formatting to my colors. So I'm going to click this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go by field value, and I'm going to go based on field and this is selection, so this is that table with those hard-coded values in, and select color. And these were just those hex 
hexadecimal color values that I put in. I'm going to click OK. So you can see crime is red. If I look at my selection pane, it's actually looking at this value here, which is which is a red. When I select GDP, it's now green. When I select population, it goes blue. You can use this um, on a lot. So what they had is they had um, some nice page selections at the top. So let's look at how we combine this with some buttons and make everything kind of change color. And to, to really quickly see how, you know, see what we're looking at so we know exactly what the page is about. So I'm going to add what? some shapes. Go ahead. That was very neat, <laughs> I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really, really cool trick. I think. Exactly. So I'm going to add a, a button here. Now you see I have three pages. Um, I'm going to have three tabs at the top, um, which are going to be my page tabs. So this is actually really new. Firstly, um, let me just fill this with white and change it to zero. And then take the outline off. So you see this, it looks like a looks like a page tab here. Um, on the button now, I'm gonna make one first. I'm gonna format one, I'm gonna copy it across. On my button, this is really cool. Um, you have all these new shapes, this is pretty new but you can change everything and I'm really, really new. Um, I, I like this one called snipped tab both top. And then is this the one I want? Let me, <laughs> I've got it open here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. You see this, if you see this kind of nice new shape, what a, what a nicer button tab that is. Um, and so I'm going to just give this text and say this is going to be page three. Now I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And I'm going to put, you see, this will be page one, this here. And I'm just going to do this the best way where I'll put them across. I can highlight them all and use my, you know, align them all to the top so that they're all level with my top visual and then distribute them so they're nicely spread out. This should be page one. It should be page two. Now I'm on page two, so I want that to be um, be highlighted. So this text, I'm going to change to a bold text so that I know I'm on page two. And I'm going to make it a little bigger. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it a, a shadow. And obviously, don't want this, so I want the shadow at the top and I want the oh no sorry I want to I want a glow is what I want shape glow and a no what what do what do I want shape no, shape shadow top right oh this is why so I need to resize it so I've just resized that so sorry let me just copy and paste them again So here we go. So this is this is a very new kind of functionality here. So I've, I've not done it too much before. So I put a shadow one, but I only want to highlight the one that I've got selected. So if you turn the shadow off, you see it changes the size dramatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this as 100%. So it's an invisible shadow. It's still got a shadow. It's just invisible for the two pages. And then um, I'm going to change the text just to normal and maybe make it size. So now we can obviously the page one. This is page three. So now we, we can see that this is a um, page two. I think it's quite obvious that this page two is selected. Uh, once I do this, I can just highlight them all. And here we go. Uh, page three, <laughs> let's call this P3 button, right? Interest of time, I'm not going to rename everything, but, but always remember.
And now the aim of this is to have these as navigation. So I'm going to turn the action on. You used to have to record a bookmark, but we don't anymore. I can just call this page navigation to page one. And this one will page navigation to page three. So when I click on it, it's simply just going to switch the page to page one. And I will copy and paste these to the other pages, format them so that you know page one on page one looks like this and so on. But going with our cool um, color scheme, you can do a lot. So the, sh the um, shape shadow, this is, it's got this color. A lot of things have this color um, default. So again, I'm going to change this based on my color, which I've hard coded in that table. Look, when can I get this bigger? When I select this, now this is blue. Now it's red and, and it just gives that nice pop of, of everything. Um, the other thing is you can format the background so the buttons themselves are, are that color and so on. So this is, this is really cool. One thing I wanted to say as well is I want to show you a really quick snippet um, from Embass. And it's going to seem like a lot of what I've been talking about now might not be so useful but I'll give you a quick um, reason why it is useful and why why you'll see I kind of said things about making groups on buttons and, and having everything. Um, and oh, maybe if I can share my audio here. Uh, oh, maybe I can't. It's OK, we don't need the audio. Can you hear this on your side at all? No, it's not terrible. But it talks. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, no need for a sound. Yeah, so I, I will basically just say, so this is came out in Embass, and I just want to give you a glimpse of what's coming to buttons because it's going to be really important on how you set things up and why to use groups. Um, just let, this is this is Amanda from the Power BI team. So essentially what they are now going to be doing, um, this is not out yet. They said it's coming out soon. This was from Embass, but you can see here, this is a mock-up, so it might not look like that. Um, I can send the link to the Embass chat on this, but you're going to have something called a bookmark navigator. And what that does is it inserts every um, bookmark that's in a group. So with those switch ones, we did bar and map, and um, she's done bar, map, and table. And essentially, it will do that hard work for you of those backgrounds and, and all those kind of um, little little tweaky bits where we had to make that, that shape to do the background. And obviously, the next one, we'll just skip through a little bit, um, is this also works for page navigations. Um, the good thing about page navigation one is that you can you can have page navigations automatically. So what I had with when I was setting the page navigation, you know, um, formatting all of that, you can still do the same. You can still use that formatting and, and the colors, but it's going to going to do this for you so that when you add new pages, it, you can see this. So these are automatic. She made those switch visuals. But it just adds um, adds extra things in. We get to go further. So here we go. So this is a page navigator. So what I just had at the top is just going to be able to do this automatically or automatically add it to every page. Now the reason I want to show you this is because this is coming. This is so important to use groups for bookmarks to bookmark everything correctly to name your visuals um, and to record on, on groups, follow those best practices and really make sure that you are selecting um, the correct settings in, in the bookmarks. Make sure that you don't put all and you don't have data when you don't want data and you don't have display when you don't need display. So I think that is right up on the hour. <laughs> any, exactly. Any, Exactly. Questions? Any 
thoughts? Okay, uh, feel free to ask your questions in chat window or just unmute yourself, please. Very simple yet very effective rules if you don't want to end up with a mess with your bookmark. <laughs> yeah, some of this I know it's not not too groundbreaking, but I think this is so important. One of the biggest things I will say is just make sure that um, we do this. Put everything, put everything neat and tidy. Get in a habit of doing it straight away. <laughs> um, people will thank you very much. Sometimes as well, here's, here's something I've actually done before quite often when I said um, spitting your report. Sometimes I will just do this and set everything up without data. I can do this, I can lay my report, and I can make it pixel perfect and then worry about adding the data later. Maybe the data is going through some EDL. Um, yeah, exactly. Steve, what app are you using to show the cursor? It's just um, cursor settings in Windows. It's my, <laughs> uh, you, you search in the settings, you'll get their cursor. Um, <laughs> good for good for being able to see what I'm clicking on, especially when it's a little bit smaller. In which version of Power BI can we see Bookmark Navigator? Um, it's it was announced at Embass, which was in June, maybe earlier. I actually asked Microsoft. They said later in the summer. Um, it's already almost October, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Soon, hopefully, they have a lot of features they're working on. Um, you know, they're they're amazing. So we can't we can't complain about how quick things are. But hopefully, soon. I don't know. Exactly, they are crazy. It's very difficult to catch up with them. Yeah, but I noticed that shape map is still in preview for more than a <laughs> year or two years. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but I know that they have a hell of a list to 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 uh, add Power BI. Yeah, it's back end stuff as well, service reports over everything. So you know, there's a lot, the lot they're working on. Exactly, and I, I and I want to say that uh, you are obviously more creative than me uh, sometimes replicating some design took me one day <laughs> yeah it's it's I just about this with you, yeah, it's... <laughs> little I'm little not... reusable tricks like that i mean i love using that that color thing i just saw that on that on that washington one mm -hmm. and just having that table and just having things you click a if you have something where you have multiple metrics one color across it's really powerful and obvious to the user what they're looking at. Exactly. It's a very nice and clean design. OK, uh, any questions? I think we are done, almost done. Sorry, may okay. I ask one question? Uh, sure, go ahead, please. Uh, Steve, thanks a lot for presentation, cool tricks and tips uh what what's your uh rules rule of thumb uh, when you uh, redesign a report uh and you don't know what hide and under selected visuals uh so uh, your task to understand what what a previous uh, designer uh used uh, which which visual he select and uh, how you deal with such task, if it makes sense. So, thank you. So I think if I understand the question, it's if, if you have a report that somebody else designed and you're trying to understand what it affects, is that correct? Yes, yes, exactly. It's difficult. Um, there's, <laughs> you can't very easily. Um, you know, you can just open everything and click it and look at the settings. There isn't a very easy way. This is exactly why it's so important to name convention everything. Um, a lot of people even go so far as documenting um, what your buttons, what your bookmarks do. Um, depending on on your project, that might be a good good progress. But it's you can't essentially. Um, it's just kind of <laughs> click around and see and try and just open everything and, and look at what what comes in and out. 
but tell them, <laughs> give them a message, show them this video and say, <laughs> do things correctly. This is this is one of the whole points of doing Thank that. You. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. Uh, using a good naming convention in everything in in the names of measures, bookmarks are very important. Uh, to to be honest, I sometimes pre prefer to create everything from scratch. If I if if I see there is no logic in their namings, it takes lots of time, unfortunately. Always think of what it'll be like if someone else is going to use this because. Probably will. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Any questions, guys? I think we are done, Steve. Thanks a lot for your time. It's very effective, and uh, I like your demos and uh, your neat tricks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. It was a, a lot of fun to be here. So thank you so much. It's, it's it's my pleasure. Uh, the recording will be available later on on our YouTube channel. You can follow the uh, announcement on 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 our uh, meetup group as well. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. See you later.